Nigerians heaved a heavy sigh of relief when the Abuja Kaduna Railway began operations. But lately, this has been happening. We'll have you watch. Emotions very high there because the trains uh, broke down and the passengers, of course, are complaining. The passengers are complaining uh, that, in fact, the issue was that nobody, and it broke down in the wee hours of, uh, I think, the morning, and nobody, as I read, came to talk to them at all about why it broke down, what happened, and that was the height of irresponsibility. At least, the, the least they could expect that someone would come and say, look, it, it, it broke down. All right, we'll just uh, continue with the rest, rest of the story. So what's really happening? Why are these new trains breaking down? And what's the update on the Lagos Ibado? Kanu, Maradi, Port Harcourt, Maiduguri, as well as other rail lines. Well, the man in charge is here as we cross live to our Buja studio. Well, the managing director, uh, Nigerian Railway Corporation, Fidet Okiria joins us now. Glad to uh, have you join us, sir. Fidet, let me begin by congratulating yeah. you on your reappointment as the MD of NRC for the second uh, and final four-year tenure effective 20th October uh, 2020. And uh, let me begin, uh, that's by the way, uh, the trains, uh, these are new locomotives, why are they breaking down? And why is nobody telling the people or being responsible enough to tell the people this is why this is the next thing that will happen? Thank you. Good afternoon, Nigeria. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. And uh, first of all, I have to appreciate Nigeria and my principals for having the confidence by appointing me for another four years. We apologize for the breakdown of the, loco of, the, of the locomotive that was carrying the train, uh, but I don't believe it was 2 a.m. because our, our last train get to destination by 8 p.m. So on that very day, we had issue with the new locomotive, and we have to step, and we have to step it aside to allow the manufacturer because we have two, two years sev service level agreement with them. Uh, so Are you able to give to us a bit more clarity? Sorry, I, I, I don't want us to have a situation where we're kind of fizzling away from the point of Indy's question there. I know that you've acknowledged that the train did, in fact, break down, but can you give us specifics as to why it broke yeah. down? I don't think people are too concerned about the time, but definitely the causes for the breakdown. If you could start there. OK. On, on, on that day, the fitters discovered that there was a water leakage in the turbocharger. I don't think that's what you start explaining to passengers on train. Uh, for they, they told them that the train had broken down and arrangement had to be made for a relief locomotive to come back to the point of breakdown. Uh -huh. And you know, in train operation, especially when you are running a single line, you have to follow. The, the, the law and all that to avoid accidents because security and safety is paramount. So you don't just deploy another locomotive to go for relief. You have to make sure you get relevant clearance and permission to go for the relief. So that's what happened that day. Mm. We have a, a, an agro problem on that particular locomotive. And when they arrived at the workshop, we took us uh, two days to refix to fix it back mm. and it, it it does seem if, as though if you follow, while, if you follow Nigerians could that if after I could, that breakdown mm. if I could come in here it does seem as though while Nigerians I'd imagine are very much time. 
Definitely. While Nigerians are welcoming uh, this innovation in terms of public transport, it is a good thing. It does seem as though there are lots of issues. So if we focus on the Lagos Ibadan railway line, for example, when will that be completed? Because I think that that's, that might be a pressing issue for a lot of people who are going to be reaping the benefits of this service. We have always, we're always hearing of all of these new railway lines being commissioned. Another one is due to be commissioned this week, I believe. Uh, if we were to start with Lagos Ibadan, for example, when will that be complete? Okay, but we have to get this right. For instance, for five years, we have operated Lagos Abuja. I will just have one instance of serious incident. Uh, so Nigeria should know that that is not a daily occurrence. And after that breakdown, we'll be operating. And on Monday the 7th, we are going to some start commercial operation. As a trial of prayer, a train will leave Ibadan by 7 a.m. on Monday the 7th. And by 4, another one will leave Lagos to Ibadan. So we want to give room for the contractor to have enough room to complete the station and fix the switches at the station. And by the time we commission in January, we will have eight trains doing two trips per day, which means 16 round trips a day for Lagos Ibadan. So the, the commercial operation will start on Monday the 7th. Okay, and then looking at the Ibadan Kano rail line, um, when will work on that commence? And how many kilometers are you expecting to, to get through, and in what time? Oh, we are talking as about uh, 1,000 kilometers, over 1,000 kilometers. And, and the construction is going to be done in, in segment by segment, working simultaneously. Uh, from Kano to Kaduna to link up with the Kaduna uh, Abuja line, and you have uh, Ibadan and Lori. The Lori Mina and Mina Abuja. Mm. Abuja. And the con contractor is being advised and being instructed to deploy simultaneously so that the job will be completed on time and Nigeria can enjoy the benefits of what the government is doing. Sorry, when you say, pardon me, when you say on time, wh when, are you, when are you projecting to have the job completed by? Uh, it, Okay, what we'll be talking about, when are we hoping to get the fund? The government, Nigerian government has made their own counterpart fund available. And, you know, it's just, we have to get the funding. For, for now, it's uh, the Chinese Housing Bank that the government of Nigeria is uh, negotiating with. And we hope with the National Assembly support, we will get it through. Let me because you cannot, you cannot just go for a loan without the uh, uh, National Assembly approving it. Let me take you back to the legacy by the rail line. Uh, uh, the president will commission that rail line by January 2021, that's next year. But operation commences on November, uh, November uh, uh, with uh, 16 trips. This is December. So did you achieve that goal? And what did it take? And is the president no, going to commission it in 2021? We didn't. Hopefully, yes. We hope that, yeah, January. Yeah, because by now, nobody would have been talking about construction again in Lagos, Ibadan. Nobody knew that we are going to have COVID. So, I, I'm, uh, so that's why I taught us a lesson, that when we fix a date, we should also leave it to other things that can happen. We are working hard to ensure that by January, because the track from Butemeta to about the ammonia is ready and we'll be using it for I think even before COVID. So the stations is where they are concentrating now and they are promising us in December ending they will deliver six of those uh, medium-sized stations while in January they will deliver the mega stations. Um, That's Monia, Bekuta, Apapa and Ebutemeta. Let me talk to you a little bit about your IGR. Um, your IGR as of September 30th stood at 1.4 billion naira, as against 
1.4 billion that he projected, and you remitted 245 million to the TSA. What factors worked at variance with your projections for 2020? You didn't meet your uh, 4.4 billion that you projected. Okay. You see, from March to August, there was no operation due to COVID. Then in September, we started TINA, skeletal service. Uh, so uh, the 16 trains we are running from uh, within Lagos Mass Transit, and uh, one week a train to Kano, uh, and the container movement we are moving out from the Papa Port had to be had to stop because of COVID and the construction of, of, of the trying to get the track, the modernized track into the Papa Port. Port. So now we are still into that construction to enter the Papa Port, Port, and we are not able to have uh, move uh, containers out of the port by rail. So that drastically affected the, our any, any. So before now, till March, when the government directed and approved the e-ticketing, and there was a proviso that a certain amount should be paid and not touched to the federal MEC account. And we have started when that contribution started when we, when we, res, we, we resume uh, train operations in September. If I, could, if I could shift our attention towards another rail line, that is Kano Moradi. Can you give us a bit more insight on what point uh, is the discussion for the loan to commence? At what point are we going to discuss the funding needed to begin that project? And if you can, on top of that, tell us when you're looking at starting work on that specific line. That's Kano Moradi. Okay, our ambition to ensure anything we are doing, we end it by uh, uh, first quarter of 2023. Uh, 23. The contract has been approved. And as I said earlier, you don't just go, because that is, and I think it's, uh, it's going to be a concession track. They are providing the funding. The, the a company, I think, in Europe uh, will we, we'll be doing that. And we are going to uh, support them and ensuring that uh, the track from Kano to Maradi comes into effect by, by, by 2023. Okay, um, let's look at um, Potako to Meiduguri, that rail line. Um, what, at what point are the plans going to commence on that project? Um, do you have funds for it? Or are you still sourcing for funds? Okay. I will, I will go back. You know, that, that what we are working on is a standard gauge line from Portaco to Manuguri and linking all the eastern and middle of the line uh, uh, states to ensure our, to we meet up with the government policy, saying that all state capitals and uh, mineral uh, producing area and potential uh, uh, industrial uh, area should be linked by rail for the com uh, for the commerce of Nigeria to to get a boost and. Why sourcing for about $13 billion? The government have to bend backwards, and we agree that we don't wait to get $13 billion since we well, why don't we work on the narrow gauge to move the speed from the 14, 40 kilometers per hour to about 80 kilometers per hour? And we think that it's a good idea to do that by ensuring we reduce the gradient, increase the... the, the uh, the, uh, the poundage of the rail and make it all concrete uh, and continuous uh, weather the uh, track. And they also increase the hazard load so that you can carry heavier loads. And that's about $3.2 billion. And I think it makes sense to do that while sourcing the $30 billion. And we hope by next year we'll be able to start if all our other things. Uh, being equal. Equal. All right, Fidet, uh, let me bring in this. With the insensate laws of lives and the destruction of vehicles uh, due to trailer accidents on our roads, one keeps wondering why are the rail lines not being used to transport, you know, fuel instead of having, uh, and heavy haulage, instead of having these heavy duty trucks ply our roads. Uh, are you discussing that? Are we thinking about that? 
No, we've been, we've been discussing that uh, for over four years. I was the director of Mechanical Electrical. And to encourage people, we brought in 40 brand new pressurized tank wagons, and they are still available within our yards. And we have been holding meetings with the various uh, petroleum uh, distribution company. Uh, uh, but, you know, government business is not by private business. The government business to provide service and ensure that people have uh, a peace of mind while they do their business. Why a typical businessman want to make his profit uh, yesterday, no patience to wait for tomorrow. So, and, uh, so we are trying to encourage them to use the rail because we can move 20 tank wagons of 44,000 liters at a go. And you don't have an issue of uh, shortages and uh, people uh, accidents. Because at least we will go at a regulated speed. And that speed will take you from Kano to Lagos with a narrow gauge line within uh, 48 hours, which no road tanker can do. But we'll be meeting up today. They will say, OK, tomorrow we are coming. Uh, uh, but as an additional, you see, there is what they call the collaborative fund, which if you, I think if you use the rail, you have to play strictly to the rule. There are no shortcuts, which I think they, they have uh, what they do with the road. Okay, well, moving from fuel transportation to people transportation, um, what about the Takwe Wari rail line? Um, we know it was commissioned by Mr. President recently. Has it commenced uh, commercial operations? Yeah. And what is the passenger traffic on yeah. it like? You see, when you start an operation, we have started. We are expecting it to build up. Like when we started Abuja Kaduna, we are getting 10 passengers, 20 passengers. But uh, in, a, in a way, worry, I think we have gotten to 300 passengers already because it's quicker to, to link up from the south to Itakwe by, by rail than by road. So we, we can make that journey in three hours from Wari to to worry to that way. And uh, by the time we continue, we hope to reduce it to two hour, 15 minutes. To, to, uh, but the issue is that we don't operate daily in order to also make a, a balance the commands involved in introducing a new, a new, a new, a new, a new, a new trade service. So it definitely appears so as though. So that's what we are doing. <laughs> and it's building up gradually. And the beauty of that line is that we hope to the AKK project we are discussing with them to move their, their pipes seriously. Uh, and a lot of pipes they are bringing in to, to, to be taken to, our, uh, to, 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 take to our, our Jakuta. So in terms of moving people, then it does appear that there are things to definitely be looking forward to. But I'd also imagine that that also uncovers a certain amount of concerns that I'm sure you would have. If we look at the Abuja Kaduna railway line, for example, what is the NRC doing in terms of security of passengers and goods? Because it's one thing to ensure that they can travel, but we definitely want to keep them safe as they do so. So what plans do you have in place to do just that? So, as, uh, we all have a full command of the Nigerian police with us as a state. We also have a full command of uh, the Nigerian Security and uh, uh, Civil Defense Corps. Full command, like you have in state with us. And we are also trying to deploy technology into securing the people. All our coaches we are bringing have a CCTV on them, and they have a, mon a monitoring room where you can monitor the passenger. And at the same time, we have inst we've installed walkthrough scanner, we've installed baggage scanner at the stations, and we have handheld scanner. And we ensure that every coach, you have two uh, uh, policemen wearing uniform, and you have, you also, we also have the DSS in plain clothes in the station and uh, in the coaches. So um, as I tell people, I, I can boast that I'm a, tra uh, a train operation expert, but I don't have that security, because we still work with our various uh, security agents in the country. One state of we mind. Make sure that we encourage them and uh, make sure they come in and secure the train for our people. One state of mind is very important, especially for somebody like you, the MD of NRC. Let me ask you about the ugly incident of the kidnap of your wife for about 13 days. She was with gunmen uh, who were dressed in police <laughs> uniform. 
It must have been a harrowing experience for you and, of <laughs> course, for her. And the commissioner uh, said that they are in need. What's the latest development on that? Have they been able to get the people who kidnapped uh, your wife? Uh, that's one thing I don't want to... Talk about. Uh, remember, okay. I don't normally talk about. We, uh, what I All do right. is then, to let's talk about that my the, wife uh, came out alive and is here. All right, fine. Let, let's talk about the economic viability of this rail project, especially when you factor in the loans. And what are the economic implications of these varied rail, rail projects on our own economy? Okay. Uh, normally, what I tell people is that do. As a nation, should we have a means of moving from place to place? And should we, if we need it, should, do we have to construct a rail, which is a mass mover of people and goods? And, goods. and we believe that when we have the rail in place, the road will last longer. Pe the, that peace of mind to travel will be there. And the... Uh, the, the you can travel in comfort with rail. So all those things, you don't quantify in Nara and Kobo. As, sometimes when I pass through the stadium, when I'm going through the stadium, when people ask me questions, I say, do people ask, how do you recover the money for building the stadium? Do you recover, talk about how people recover the more overhead bridges? These are services that government need to provide for people, for, for, the, for the citizen to be happy and, and, and do their work and where the money comes from very effectively. But sir, so if, if I have a good train service, why can't I fly from, why can't I use the train from Abuja uh, to Lagos? Sorry, I was going to and, interject. And does it prevent you from work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bear with me. I just wanted to come in on that and say, you know, but we're constantly being told that it's not about taking loans or getting into debt, but more about having a projected plan of how to repay those loans. And, you know, the average businessman will say you need to tender a feasibility study before you embark on any project. So I'm just curious as to whether, what extent have you done a feasibility study on maybe the number of passengers you're expecting to, to you know, transport or goods that, and how you, you repay see, the loans you've incurred? In the past 20, 25 years, feasibility has been done on all this rail service. And it continues to change when the uh, situation in the world also changes. So there is a feasibility study, and you don't believe, if you come for me for a loan, first of, my first question is to say, how do I get my money back? And any country that wants to give another country loan also ask that question. Uh, that they are not just uh, saying we have the money, let's throw it off. They are not doing donation. Uh -huh. The beauty of that, what we have done so far, that the Chinese has agreed to give a constitutional loan, which we are, using, we are tapping on. Uh -huh. So... I don't believe they do their due de diligence. The Exim Bank have a consultant, and they come to us, and they come to Nigeria, they come to the Minister of Finance, and they ask a lot of questions, both environmental impact analysis and all that economic indices that they look at. So they, just, they, they, look, they look at it before granting the nation, and they know how reliable and uh, how far you have been performing on loan granted to the nation. Otherwise, they have gone to other countries and been doing this, but they limit themselves to where they go to. So the, the fear of whether it will be paid back or not, I think there's a program for that within the uh, Minister of Finance and uh, the Budget Office. Are you able to shed any more light? I want to go back to Lagos, Ibadan, and the constructions happening there. Are you able to shed any more light on requests for loans? We know that uh, perhaps as Earlier this week, or within the last within the last week or so, the Nigerian government has come out to say that they did not request additional uh, funds for uh, the that project itself. Is that something that you can comment on to give us a bit more clarity on what's happened there? No, that I, I don't I don't know where that information came out from. That we request. when we are concluding, we are wrapping up. Uh, 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 today there is a handing over process going on right now with some of my director and ministry people. Uh, on the track. So I don't know where they got that idea that Nigeria is asking for more loan for, for Lagos. I, 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 that, I, I've never heard of that. But. All right, Philip. Uh, uh, you want to talk to us about NRC's introduction of another train on the Lagos Ogun Transit and what informed this? I 
another train on the Lagos Ogun Transit. Okay, mass transit. Okay, we, before the COVID, we were, we were running 16 trains. trains. So when we started, in order to obey the uh, COVID protocol, we just started with uh, a one return trip. And we are trying to bring back all the services that we stopped. And we are working on the rolling stock. Because if you have kept a rolling stock for six months, uh, we believe that at least we should touch them. And we are doing that. And uh, we just want to meet up with our normal schedule that we have before now. OK. Um, you've been on this journey, if I may use that expression, for a while. Uh, in terms of and your vision, as far as I, I gather, is to link all the states by rail. So could you just give us your own impression of maybe in five years' time where you see Nigeria, you know, how will be the better if all these projects are achieved? Where do you see us at? So uh, I will appeal that Nigerians and uh, more small, big, or little should support this idea of not just rail, having infrastructure that can test the test of time. Because when you have this, you are not going to rebuild them. Our, the generation coming will not be talking about it. They will be talking about using it and maintenance. So I believe with the present government, with the will and uh, this thing they have to, to, to have rail all over the place, at least we are talking about, about linking Itakbe to Abuja. And when you do that, uh, you have linked worry to Kaduna that's already in place. And we are talking about linking Kano to Kaduna, which is part of the Lagos, uh, Lagos Kano. And we are now talking about reconstruction of the Eastern Oasis and having the branch, the branch line from Kapachan to Kaduna with a big base where you have to transship from standard to narrow gauge. Uh, and you don't forget about the East-West, that's uh, what we call uh, the coastal rail line. That is also a dream. We hope that when all these things are done, we, th things with industry, we, people, because when you, you have idea of how to grow and plant industries, and because of the limitation of movement of what you produce to the market, I think it used to slow down investors. But when the rail is built and they know it's available to move either the raw material to site and the finished product to the market, I think, I think the investor will be uh, encouraged. It's an what, incentive for the of, industry to, to, to boom. What of the rehab, re rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt, my degree, Eastern Line Rail, or has it commenced? Talk to us about it, just very briefly. No, it has not commenced. The FEC just approved it, and the finalization of the agreement is in place because you know you have to go to our attorney general office for vetting and uh, the the company will also vet it that's where we are we are hoping that they will start very early uh, because they, they have gone around with our men and the uh, with the, like the company trying to because as i said earlier they are going to straighten the curves and remove gradient so while we are maintaining the old routes but there are some areas which they have to move out of the, of the old route so that the track can, can be straight. A place, I don't know whether you've used the train on the houses, there's a place called La Galanga, which is a, a multiple reverse curve. And we are also branching out into a place where we have uh, the industrial, uh, rail industrial park, and we are going to the deep sea port in Port Harcourt, and it will also be branching to Damaturu, so they have just come back from that study and the survey. So we hope by, by January, January or thereabouts, action will start. All right, Engineer Fidet Eden Talen Ohiria, Managing Director, Nigeria Railway Corporation, thank you so much for your time on Newsday.